Welcome to the final set. The mobs here still don't auto attack for much. However, a lot of mobs have gigantic AoEs, so be prepared. There are also several mobs that have one shot AoE telegraphs when out of combat that are room wide, so be very careful. First, we have the mining drone. When pulled, this will knock back four times and then use Aetherochemical Cannon, a huge half circle AoE in the facing direction. It repeats from here so it'll constantly knock you back. Recommended to back yourself in a wall so you don't get pushed all over the place. Next is the system wide patrol. This will cast high voltage, a gigantic point blank AoE that can be interrupted. It can also use repelling cannons, which is also a point blank AoE, but it's much smaller. It also has ring cannon, a donut AoE. Ortho system alpha will shoot a large frontal cone with a delayed telegraph. Make sure you're paying attention to where you're pointing these. The ortho drone will simply shoot out telegraphed line AoEs. It's an easy mob, but it self-destructs on death, similar to sprites from earlier. So make sure you don't stand next to them when they die. Next, we have the mother bit. This will cast Citadel Buster, a late telegraph line AoE. The Orthotor will have a 32 ton swipe, a huge conal AoE. It'll also dash to a player and use 128 ton screen, a quick cast medium point blank AoE. The Servo Mechanical Ortho Chimera is one of the most dangerous mobs on the set. On top of the untelegraphed Dragon's Voice Donut AoE and Ram's Voice Point Blank AoE, it has three additional attacks. Dragon's Breath is a huge section to the front and left. Engulfing Ice is a huge AoE to the front and right. Scorpion Steen is a back attack. It's recommended to mostly stand behind it to avoid all the breath attacks, only moving when you need to dodge Ram's voice or Scorpion Stain. The Mithrades use a 270 degree frontal AoE. Get behind this. Sphinxes will use Swinge, a large frontal cono that you've seen from 21 to 30 from Lesser Dragons. Orthonauts will cast Rotal Swipe, a frontal cono AoE that's a medium size. They'll then attempt to cast Steam Clean, which is a self buff. Zagnols use a room-wide AoE out of combat. The telegraph for this shows up very late. This is a one-shot and you should always keep your eyes peeled if these are in adjacent rooms. When pulled, it'll cast Pounce Errant, which will jump on a player, knocking back other nearby players. When solo, they're extremely trivial to pull, as there's no knockback. The Durga will cast a telegraphed large front Kono AoE. Afterwards, it'll use Brain Jack, applying confusion on one player and casting an AoE on the location. When solo, confusion causes you to stand still, but you still have time to walk away after the confusion wears off. Fitters will cast Unholy when out of combat, a room-wide AoE. They're extremely trivial to pull, so, as with all mobs like this, try to get them out of the way as soon as possible. On Thorn 99, we fight Excalibur. It starts off by casting Paradoxum, applying an element to all players. Getting hit by an attack of the matching element is lethal. Next, it'll cast Caliburni. This shoots a cone of swords out in the front, so make sure you're not standing in front of the boss's facing direction. These swords will eventually return across the arena, so be careful. Then, the boss will cast Thermal Divide. One side will be fire, and one will be ice. Look at the effects in the air, and the swords that Excalibur is holding up. You want to be on the side opposite to your debuff, or you will die. Next, it'll use Cold Dimension Blade, followed by one caliber skill at random. In future rotations, it will use a random skill without using this cast. Empty Souls Caliber is a donut AoE. 
you want to stand inside for this one. Solid Souls Caliber is a point-blank AoE, you want to get out for this one. Each AoE will also create a random additional attack, either red rings or vacuum waves, which you can adjust and dodge as necessary. The boss will then cast Caliburni again, although this cast and all subsequent casts, it'll shoot in three directions. The front, back left, and back right. Make sure you're not standing in any of those directions. The boss will then cast Paradoxum, and all party members will be inflicted with either fire or ice. And two of the groups of swords on the side of the arena will also become fire and ice. Next, the boss will cast Flame Forge or Frost Forge. Whenever he casts, you want to be the opposite element meaning that if your element matches his, you need to get hit by the opposite element sword to swap elements. And if your element is already the opposite, you want to avoid all the swords or else you'll get your element swapped and die. To accomplish this, look for the swords of the element you want to get hit by, then either go opposite to them, standing just off to the side of one of the other swords, or just stand directly in front of one of the swords if you can make it there. Right after this mechanic resolves, the boss will use a random caliber skill. Get ready to go in or out. After that, it will use Ex Flamius or Ex Glacius, then repeat the rotation. Ex Flamius creates sunspots around the arena. The best way to avoid this is to simply go in a circle around the middle. Exglacius creates AoEs around the arena that burst off in all directions. However, you could stand in any of these shapes around the center of the arena at the end and you can avoid any pattern of this mechanic, making it very simple to dodge. Finally, it will cast Thermal Divide again. Make sure you pay attention to the swords and go to the opposite side, and then from here on out, it repeats the rotation starting from the three-directional Caliburni. After defeating Excalibur, the path to floor 100 will open. Congratulations on making it to the end. I hope this guide was helpful in helping you understand the mob and boss mechanics. I'll see you guys next time! Get me out of here. I'm gonna get out of here ASAP.